From pale keyboard heroes to worldwide champions against bad stuff, they're super against unfair things and love revealing secrets. Shout out to the scary hacktivist crew, Anonymous. We've heard tons about them, but who are these mystery folks? Is this group worth cheering for their heroics? Welcome to today's video and come along as we spill the mind-blowing scoop on the mysterious Anonymous. Anonymous made hacktivism cool because they're known for hacking due to political or social reasons. At first, they were all about massive pranks. So, what's up with Anonymous? What did they do? Why wear the mask? And what are they up to now? We'll see that in a bit. Anonymous, which means unnamed in Old Greek, are a bunch of activists. Since 2008, they've been shouting about free speech, internet freedom, and copyright stuff. They go after writers, big companies, and even governments. They do cyber attacks and protests, and guess what? They keep their name secret. Cool, isn't it? But wait, there's more to these cool rebels trying to shake things up. They hate censorship and government spying big time. Now get this, it all started with some random folks chatting about anarchy, oppression, and the world on 4chan in 2003. Pretty wild, right? Ever wonder why they wear those masks? It's a big deal for the anonymous group. When you see anonymous folks in videos or protests, they rock the Guy Fox mask. It's from a rad comic called V from Vendetta by Alan Moore back in 1982. This comic is inspired by Guy Fox. He was involved in the gunpowder plot in 1605. They tried to blow up the House of the Lord of England, but did not succeed. The main character V wears the mask to be like the real rebel Guy Fox, an artist named David Lord Druitt, and he became even more famous in the movie of 2006. That's how this mask became a global symbol with a great history of plotting and rebelling against the establishment. Now that we know about the mask, let's dig into why this group does things in a decentralized way. Anonymous doesn't have a boss or a set of group members. Instead, it's like a bunch of people all over coming together because they're into the same stuff. That means the folks leading the charge, totally unknown. Even the cops trying to figure out their not-so-legal moves can't pinpoint who's who in the group. It's a super bold move. They're like, no one knows how many anonymous members are associated with the group. These things make us different from others. No one is our boss who can control everything inside the office. There is no headquarters of the anonymous group. If you or someone wants to join us, it's your choice. You're in or out, it depends upon you. Whenever you want to come and whenever you want to go, it's your choice, no one will force you. Their scariness is unleashed when this statement is attached to any letter meant to any violators. We are anonymous, we are legion, we do not forgive, expect us. For real, they're as cool as they say, and now it gets even more exciting. This group got famous for doing big things, some super techie stuff. Fast forward to 2008 when they hit the news by dropping a spooky video declaring war on the Church of Scientology. In the video, they say the church was using its members for years and they had to be taken down. For the good of your followers, for the good of mankind, for our own enjoyment, we shall proceed to expel you from the internet. So after some computer attacks and lots of people hitting the streets, things got wild. Tons of folks wearing Guy Fawkes masks showed up at Scientology places everywhere. It was a big hit to the church's reputation and they lost millions. Their website got hammered, but even worse, their street cred took a beating they could not fix. Smashing. This was the first time these hacktivists teamed up for a big cause, and it was just the beginning of what it was about to do. All right, buckle up for the ride. In 2010, Anonymous rolled out Operation Payback, a bold move targeting copyright groups like RIAA and IFPI. These groups were busy keeping tabs on copyright stuff happening on tort sites, but Anonymous wasn't stopping there. By the end of the year, they switched gears taking on big shots like Visa and MasterCard for cutting ties with WikiLeaks. Fast forward to 2011, and things got even wilder. Dutch prosecutors and the police got some unexpected attention when two peeps involved in the operation got scooped up. Talk about a roller coaster of events. So with another operation in 2014, Anonymous kicked off Operation Ice ISIS, their cyber war against the Islamic State. They aimed to put the brakes on ISIS using social media. They took over, leaked, or messed up thousands of shady accounts on Facebook and Twitter. After the Paris attacks in 2015, where ISIS claimed responsibility, Anonymous doubled down with Operation Paris. So far, these operations have had some success, though some folks in Anonymous think some moves weren't that great. Jumping to 2020, Anonymous went all in, so passionate for their precious duty, launching cyber attacks on the Nigerian government to back up the NSARS movement. Get this, one of the Anonymous crew, Light Mods, actually tweeted about the attack. They hit hard using DDoS attacks to overpower websites like EFCC and INEC and other parts of the Nigerian government. That's how they rolled in support of hashtag NSARS. Hold on tight, because in February 2022, Anonymous jumped into the Russian-Ukraine showdown. They went all out, 
hitting up hundreds of websites like Russian banks, media giants like Russia Today, and even Russian government sites got hit too, thanks to anonymous slick DDoS attacks. And guess what? Many of those sites took a timeout, shutting down for quite a bit. But you know that's not all. Anonymous took a swing at the Ministry of Defense, pulling off a mega leak of 1.3 gigabyte data set, bold and audacious. This is the mighty Russia. Then on March 7, 2022, they went even bigger, taking control of Russia's state TV and some streaming sites. They flipped the script, interrupting the regular shows and blasting images from the Ukraine war. And hold up, there's more to their game. They own up to loads of operations. Deadly? Absolutely. Tough as nails? Oh yeah. Double yes. These guys don't mess around. Now you think with all these moves the big government agencies would have nailed Anonymous by now. I mean, they're pros at digging into secrets and catching folks. But how did these groups view right and wrong? Well, they got pretty fed up with how things are around the world. Politics, money, big businesses, and secret spying. All that frustration mixed with a global hacking movement. Years of built-up anger privacy rights getting tossed aside, and a bunch of wild conspiracy stuff led to the birth of MOVA. They even joined in on cyber attacks to take a swing at those regimes they're not cool with. Now get this, only a few individuals have been nabbed in recent years, giving a face to Anonymous. The most famous ones were from a group called Luzek, busted in 2012. Members like Hector Manziger, Jeremy Hammond, and Mustafa Al-Bazam were part of both Anonymous and Luzek. It's like a web of hacker legends. Anonymous got some heat from different sides. People call them out for things like unintended data leaks that spill info about regular folks. Another issue is that they don't really have a clear plan or a boss, so anyone can do stuff in their name. This means actions can be all over the place with different meanings and effects. It's like they're catching flack for not having a game plan or a boss calling the shots. Opinions about Anonymous are all over the place. Some folks cheer them on, calling them internet heroes or digital rebels for standing up to what they see as unfair and taking on big shots. But others, like cops and big companies, call them cyber criminals. But see, this whole debate isn't just about anonymous. It's a part of a bigger talk about internet freedom, privacy, and how we use digital tools for political and social things. Here's the thing. Since anonymous doesn't have a boss, what one person or group does might not be what everyone else is doing. That sums up the likely criticism and opinions leveled against the dreaded group. Anonymous, what exactly does the future hold for this group? Thinking about the future, Anonymous will likely keep adapting to new tech things, kind of like how a chameleon changes its color to fit in with its surroundings. They'll stay flexible and roll with the changes, just like the chameleon blends in with where it's at. As long as they see things they don't like in the world, there will be folks with the skills and drive to keep doing their thing. Now, predicting exactly what Anonymous will do next is a real head-scratcher. They're all spread out and their plans are kind of up in the air. But one thing's for sure, they're sticking around in the cyber activism game. Whether it's a digital protest or cyber attacks, they'll keep rolling with their core ideas. And that's why people see them as mysterious and a powerful bunch. If you had a blast checking this out, drop your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-blowing stuff.